All right, Alex, you can go ahead and get us started. Thank you so much, Brittany. Um, so my name is Alexandra Corey, and I am the Training and Technical Assistance Coordinator here at GCAP. And um, you've kind of already met her, but I'll let Brittany introduce herself. Hi, everyone. I'm Brittany Copeland. I am the Communications Manager at GCAP, and I'm excited that everyone is here, and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, hey, so today we'll be discussing our parent toolkit. Um, it's a really cool resource that GCAP has just recently released. And um, we encourage you to type in the chat box, ask us questions, give us feedback, and let us know your thoughts throughout the webinar. Here at GCAP, we recognize that parents are the number one educators for their children. We don't wanna dictate family values, but we do wanna give parents the resources that they need to have these sensitive conversations about topics like um, reproductive health or healthy relationships, substance abuse, mental health, um, because sometimes these can be daunting and it's hard to know what to say or where to start. So GCAP recognized this need and we created a parent toolkit so you never have to feel unprepared. Let's walk through a few situations that a lot of families encounter and think of the best options to navigate this topic. So you might have a young person say, my friends and family are calling me fat, what should I do? Or what's a penis, does everyone have one? Or um, I think my teen is being bullied or pressured online and I don't know how to check in without seeming overbearing. Or recently a lot of children have asked why are so many people protesting? What's going on? So this toolkit is just an empowering resource for adults, and it's also a protective factor for young people. We want to have open and honest parent-child communication to help children prepare for the social challenges that they encounter. So you tell us, what is the most shocking question you've been asked by a young person? You can type that in the chat box. Do men have babies? Absolutely. Why is my mother so mean? How does the baby come out of mommy's stomach? So yeah, these are all questions that young people ask and sometimes it's like, oh my goodness, I did not expect that. Um, I didn't know what to say, but we asked y'all whenever you're registering this question. And so here are some of the other answers that we got. Why am I in foster care? Why is there so much violence? Is it true that you can't get pregnant if you have sex while you're standing up? Someone said that a 13 year old male asked them when he was gonna get his period. Or why do old people have sex? Someone might say, why are you wearing that wig when you have hair? So let's look at the parent toolkit and see um, if it has some of the answers to these questions. So at gcap.org slash toolkit, this is what the page looks like. And um, like I said, it has a lot of answers to these questions. So first, let's make sure that we have um, a good response to whenever someone asks us a question. So let's look at some door slammers and door slammers and door openers. So a door slammer is when a young person asks you a question and you say things like, why are you asking that? Are you having sex? Or you don't need to know that. I'm not going to tell you that. 
And so what that does is it really discourages that young person from coming to you again with the question because you didn't answer their last question and maybe they felt um, stupid for asking it. And really they just wanted to know, they just had these questions. But a door opener would be something like, that's a great question, what do you think about that? Or if you don't know the answer, it's always fine to say, I'm not sure, I'll find out for you and I'll get back to you. Or you can say, let's find out together and you could teach them how to do good research on their own from a trusted source. Another one might be um, what is a very sensitive topic and it's kind of hard to talk about sometimes, but about reproduction and pregnancy. So we saw the question about do men have babies or does everybody have a penis? And this would be a great resource for those questions. So it's really normal for people and for children to have questions about pregnancy and reproduction. Depending on the age, you could even go into um, birth control or consent. You could talk about sexually transmitted diseases or infections, but if it's a young child, you could just say what it says right here, where babies need to grow inside a uterus for nine months before they come out of the world. So that could be the question about the babies growing in the tummy. So it really just has some simple things that you can say, just some facts that are medically accurate for you to give your young people if they ask these questions when you're not really sure what to say. Next, let's look at peer pressure and body image. So the question about um, my friends and family say I'm fat, I'm not really sure what to do. One thing you could do is just change the way that you're having conversation. So it's not necessarily adding anything, it's just changing and making some improvements. So instead of talk about, talking about dieting, you could just talk about eating healthy or instead of talking about wanting to improve your body to be more attractive, you could just talk about being healthy, to be ready for whatever life has to offer. One thing I love about this guide is that at the bottom it has some red flags about when you might want to see a doctor, or whenever you do go to the doctor, what questions you can ask. So it's a really robust guide of um, just some simple things that you can do to improve, and then also if this isn't improving, what do I do now? A few other topics, there are digital drama, there are topics on, um, and guides on bullying, guides on some scary statistics about vaping, and there are also some on protests, race, social injustice, like homelessness. Um, so there are a lot of guides on here, and you can just download it, you could print it out, you could screenshot it for your phone. Um, if you're like, I need to remember to say this next time I'm with my child, and then you just already have it right there. Just pull it up. But no one's perfect, um, so we have not included everything. So if there's something that you're not sure about, you can email us, but we'd like to hear right now, what are some things that you haven't seen on the Parent Toolkit that you would like to see? And the option to email us, oh, it's open to boys while girls have menstrual cycles. Okay, I get that. We can definitely add some language of how to explain what's happening in someone else's body that's different than yours. That would be very helpful. Because I think it's important for everyone to know about all the bodies. <laughs> so we're not surprised. Mood swings, yes, sign me up for that. Let me get a one pager on Moon Sweet. <laughs> oh, thank you, Faith. Yes, there are so many topics that are listed on there. And like Alex said, um, the toolkit is designed to be just information at your fingertips. So, yes, there's a lot more that we could say on certain topics, but we really wanted to provide an easy read and some of those just hot, quick tips that you can apply it immediately and start using in your home. 
But if you guys have some more stuff, please email us at parents at gcap.org. We'll love to hear from you. Thank you, Brick. And now Brittany's gonna tell you how to become a partner of the Parent Toolkit. Yes, so I think tonight in the audience, we have a lot of parents. Welcome, but we also have a lot of professionals, youth serving professionals. Um, oh, and I just saw dealing with teen mental health and depression. We have a great um, video of, of that on our Facebook and YouTube. So I'll be sure to put a link in at the bottom of the chat. That's a really great topic. Um, but as youth serving professionals, we all want the best for our youth. And I know and, and I know that we all believe home is the first and primary classroom. And that made parents the uh, first and most important teachers. And so that is why as you certain professionals that we're here today, because it's how can we better support the home life, right? Active, constant, healthy parent engagement helps to reduce risky behaviors. And we, when we talk about risky behave behaviors, Look at this chart right here. Um, Georgia, we have, we're fourth with the highest repeat teen pregnancy in the nation. Um, we're 18th in single birth, highest teen pregnancy rate. Obes obesity is very high here in Georgia. Um, suicide between the ages of 10 and 24 is also um, a very big public health issue here in Georgia. So, with risky behaviors, we just want to make sure that everyone understands this parent toolkit is more than just pregnancy prevention. We are here to su support and provide as much information so that our young people can have a healthy life. And we know that across the state, many agencies are convening to provide support um, and hope for our youth. Um, so we know that we're all a part of this ecosystem and we're all doing our part to help as agents of change to help you navigate complex issues. So we invite you all to become a parent toolkit partner. Um, if you're working in higher ed, a corporation, a healthcare system, if you're like us, a nonprofit, if you're in the school, if your school is struggling with connecting with more parents, and um, we invite you to become a partner as well as just community organizations. Um, so yeah, there's a need for all of us to really participate to help those um, home environments. Yes. So I know you guys are like, so if I become a partner, like what do I get out of it? <laughs> I'm glad that you asked. Um, here are some of the, the perks and support that you will receive from GCAP when you sign up to be a toolkit partner. So GCAP, me, Alex, staff, we're going to do everything to make this as easy as possible. We're going to give you a social media kit with a calendar so that you can post on your social media channels and share with your audience. Um, share with your parents. Um, we're also going to put your organization on our website so that everyone know that you are a partner. We will also offer you space in the um, hard, cup, hard, <laughs> in the printed version of the toolkit. You can um, have a resource page so that you can also let other families know what your services are. Um, when we do interview, interviews, we will also mention your organization, um, but again, we will handle all of the media relations work when it comes to that to really make sure that your local um, newspapers, TV show, local media know that you're a toolkit um, partner and we'll take care of that for you guys. Um, but I, I like to call this last one like a cool bonus item. Because when you become a partner, you will work with us to design and customize your own parent workshop. So whatever um, actual topics and topics that you all see in your community, in your organization, we can work together to create a workshop that's going to really serve your immediate needs as a community. So I see someone ask, how do I sign up to be a partner? Next slide. 
to be a partner, email Alex or myself, and we can send you out a full contract and more information with all the details about the partnership. Do we have any questions? Um, girls mentoring program, that is excellent. Um, I mean, we all hear that parents are requesting for more support and, I, and organizations are requesting more uh, participation with parents. So I really know that the toolkit can kind of be beneficial for both audiences. And this is something that's already created. Um, feel free, whether you're a partner or not, to let your network and your parents know. You can print out any page. You can download the entire um, toolkit, or you can just download it one page at a time to share with your parents that you know are struggling with certain topics. How do we share additional toolkit resources with you? Just email us. That's, that's all. Um, and let us know more about those additional resources that you would like to share. Mm -hmm. Email parents at GCAP or email us individually. Thank you for asking about Spanish. So if we are working with someone that we know that has that audience, um, we can definitely provide information in a different language. We just have to um, be able to identify that population and then we can get you that information. We can translate it. Great questions tonight. Separation anxiety and abandonment issues for grammar school children. That's a great topic. We're gonna take a note of that as well. Thank you. <laughs> Going back to school after maybe having been with children, like their whole family for such a long time and whenever school does start back, that would be a big one. Yeah, I mean, anxiety is just a wonderful topic to discuss because you can experience it in kind of every situation. So as school is looking different in the fall, maybe virtual, maybe a hybrid, maybe we're going with masks on. There's a lot of um, anxiety around that and we have to carefully transition our children to prepare them for that. I think that would be a great topic for our webinar. <laughs> Yes. Alice, are you taking notes? Well, I'm going to download the chat and we're going to um, let everyone know about these wonderful suggestions at our staff meeting. That's and get sure. started with some more info. Um, but we definitely, definitely look forward to partnering with you all. If you're, if you're a member of a church and you want more parent engagement at your church, we're open to that. Um, it's not just about nonprofit organizations or schools. Like it takes all of us in that ecosystem to really um, play a part in helping our youth to have a healthier generation. Absolutely. So we look forward to seeing you guys via email and maybe some one-on-one um, -on -one Zoom appointments to dive deeper into your um, questions that you are mentioning and topics. And that's it for tonight. Thank you. Thank y'all. Have a great night. <laughs>